So our next panel, um, it's about EVM and beyond, uh, DeFi on horizon. Uh, our moderator today is going to be Jordan Kalinoff, uh, and he's going to be joined by Spencer Soloway, John Camardo, Mike McCann, and Sebastian Grunwald. I hope I'm saying that right. But please, welcome, guys. Take a seat. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. So this should be a very, very exciting topic, as uh, Rob mentioned in his opening. The EVM is one of the biggest projects that uh, Horizon Labs and Horizon is going to be uh, embarking on in the near future. So uh, this is all about what that project is and what it's going to open up in terms of applications and smart contracts and all the things in Web3 that everyone has uh, gotten really excited about. So um, to begin with, though, let's, uh, let's take a minute or two to uh, just introduce everyone. Sebastian, you want to start off? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sebastian. I'm from Germany, uh, working there for a software engineering company uh, called Create3 Labs. Uh, what we do, for example, is at the moment we work together with Horizon to actually implement the EVM sidechain, and that's also why I think I'm on this panel today. Um, my personal background is that um, I'm a developer myself. I've developed a lot of smart contracts, for example, in Solidity, and um, I've also used a lot of DeFi protocols on Ethereum, but also on other EVM-based chains, and um, yeah, so excited to speak on this panel. Uh, John, you want to give a little intro? Sure. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, good morning, everybody. John Camardo, product manager here at Horizon Labs. Um, I'm from the best city in the world, New York City. Uh, happy to be here with you all today. Uh, my background is actually in traditional finance, so I came from Capital One, major credit card company. Uh, in the United States. I worked in commercial banking for quite a while. Uh, kind of caught the crypto bug about a year ago and uh, joined Horizon Labs. Uh, I think it was 15 months ago at this point, uh, participating in pretty much every product and project that uh, we've done over the past year, from ApeCoin to Other Side to Cobalt and now the EVM. So very excited to be with everybody today. Thanks very much, John. Spencer? Sure. Thanks, Jordan. So I'm Spencer. I am the Director of Product Marketing here at Horizon Labs. Uh, my background is both in product marketing and acquisition marketing, um, both working you know, in sort of early adoption or future tech um, with a background in things like 3D printing as well as kind of ed tech um, and kind of that whole space as well as like I said, acquisition marketing and uh, performance marketing and SEO and SEM uh, before kind of getting back to product marketing and I joined Horizon Labs um, at this point just a few months ago. Um, my you know, crypto background at this point is a number of years, um, you know, about as long as it can be and you know, my involvement in DeFi and across ecosystems is um, most embarrassingly vast, I guess, <laughs> but uh, you know that's kind of where we are. Well, thanks very much. And uh, what I want to kind of start off with is, and I, I'm going to direct this to John. Um, so the EVM is going to open up uh, some serious doors to the Horizon ecosystem. The Ethereum standard has become something that uh, has really taken over uh, Web3, has brought in millions of users trillions of dollars in, in TVL that are now unlocked with a lot of things that you can do with uh, an Ethereum virtual machine. So, you know, uh, Rob had made it a priority to open this up um, and have that on the Horizon ecosystem. John, tell us, you've been, you've been integral in building that. Tell us everything there is about the origin story of it and where it's going. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jordan. I actually haven't been super integral in building it. It's been mostly Victor and team, so have to give credit where credit's due. But uh, we'll start out just by saying, in the past, or at least for the for first, I guess, year or so that I was with the company, it kind of felt like Horizon and building on Horizon was something you needed to know, essentially a different language to do. 
And the biggest uh, value add that I see with Ethereum is that essentially we're building something that allows us to reach a tremendous number of developers who all speak solidity essentially. Um, and uh, they'll be able to bring whatever code that they've deployed, whether it be in Ethereum or any other EVM uh, that exists out there, and by the way, there are actually quite a few, to our ecosystem. And so just to start out, I mean, it's very exciting to have the ability to have people bring their NFTs, their fungible tokens. We're sort of looking at what other dApps we can build, bring to the Horizon ecosystem so that uh, people can actually use the tokens and NFTs that they're creating to do swaps. Uh, so we're building a, an automated market maker. Um, we're looking into building an NFT marketplace. Uh, and Sebastian and team are bringing a, a tremendous amount of other things to the table. So really excited just to have the ability now to have people come on uh, to the Horizon ecosystem uh, in, a, in a very easy and just in a way that they can, they already know how to speak, essentially. Thanks, John. Um, so Spencer, you've spent uh, a lot of your time digging into the DeFi world. Um, prior to your time joining Horizon Labs, it's a great passion of yours. You've worked with a lot of different ecosystems, a lot of different EVMs. What in your mind from the DeFi perspective are the building blocks that really make a vibrant ecosystem that will bring in users, bring in TVL? Yeah, it's a great question. So at the end of the day, Jordan, you know, an EVM is a transaction layer, right? That's what Ethereum was built for. That's what the virtual machine provides. And, you know, that's sort of what you have to lean into in order to build everything else on top of it. So, you know, John had mentioned that we're built, we built an AMM, we're building an NFT marketplace. Um, you know, those sorts of basic building blocks to me are probably the most important having that way to transact amongst users peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, but also, you know, lending and borrowing as well, obviously bridging, oracles, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but really just leaning into uh, this idea of the system as a transaction layer, as something that you can build other products on top of, right? Um, you know, here internally, we've had a lot of discussions about, you know, different sort of vertical specific products um, you know, where, you know, perhaps you have a marketplace for one type of product or another, and no matter how complex they're sort of presented, at the end of the day, when you boil them down, you start to realize, well, you know, this really is based on an NFT marketplace, or this really is based on an AMM with that kind of additional functionality on top. Um, and, you know, to me, it's a really exciting time because in the last cycle, we kind of had a, an explosion of these sort of base building blocks, right? And so, you know, we had Uniswap, which was obviously very early on, but then we also started to have the Aves and Compounds of the world that will last, the Open Seas of the world, um, and those things that I think people will continue to fork and build on and kind of uh, get to the next generation. Thanks. Um, you know, just to move on to Sebastian, um, it's not just DeFi that uh, is going to be built on uh, the Horizon EVM. Uh, there's going to be a lot of other um, interesting things, uh, especially on the NFT side. And Horizon Labs is not going to be the only builder. I mean, the, the real hope of the uh, Horizon EVM is for us to create this community of builders from all over Web3 to come and uh, use this platform to uh, build really useful applications um, and exciting, fun uh, lucrative applications uh, uh, for, for millions of users. So, Sebastian, your team is a pioneer in partnering with us on that. So, can you uh, take a little bit of time and explain what you're working on? Yeah, sure. So, we are actually working on an NFT marketplace, which we will then deploy on the Horizon EVM sidechain. I think one benefit we can um, bring to the Horizon ecosystem is that we uh, do have uh, one NFT project on our own, which is called Polychain Monsters. So the project already has an existing community of, I think, around 60,000 um, wallets holding our NFTs on, on different EVM-based chains already. So our users also know how to like, switch MetaMask to a new chain. 
and we are looking forward to bring this community to the Horizon ecosystem. And um, also I think that NFTs and DeFi, um, they are more and more connecting. Uh, we did see that already with the Board Ape Yacht Club on Ethereum, for example, where um, they brought out the fungible token, the Ape token. I mean, Horizon Labs knows it best because um, they did the successful launch. And here what we saw is that um, like from that point, um, the NFTs of the collection were like, yeah, one thing. Um, but on the other side, like Ape brought a lot of volume to different DeFi protocols on Ethereum, like Uniswap, uh, V2, V3, other exchanges, um, like um, protocols where you can um, get a loan based on Ape as collateral. And um, my thesis is that in the future we will see this more and more, maybe not in the dimension of Ape, but even for smaller projects, bringing out their own tokens. And then if they would do it on the Horizon EVM sidechain, um, this can generate a lot of transaction volume on the DeFi protocols on the Horizon EVM sidechain. And in addition, I think that especially for Zen as a token itself, um, what the NFT community usually does uh, is they trade NFTs in the native uh, currency of, or, or the native token of the network. Like on Ethereum, they mostly trade with ETH. Uh, on Solana, for example, they mostly trade with Sol. And um, I, I think and I hope we will see that, that on the Horizon EVM sidechain then, uh, people actually trade NFTs with Zen. And that would... Uh, also generate TVL because then would need to be bridged into the network maybe from Maychain and people would hold that Zen and um, make NFT offers and so on and I, I also see a lot of potential here and I'm looking forward to, to use it. Thanks very much. Um, I guess I'll transition back to, to John. So, uh, you know, when you look at the crypto Web3 world, uh, there, there's a lot of EVMs out there um, and we came a little bit later to this, and with that, we had an opportunity to take a look at what other people have done right, what they might have made missteps on. What, in your opinion, while uh, we were working on this project to develop the, uh, the EVM, what were some key uh, areas that we compared to other EVMs and made choices on um, to, to design what, we, uh, what we're going to be coming out with uh, very soon in the near future? Sure. Uh, thanks, Jordan. And thanks for putting me on the spot with this question. I wasn't actually prepared for it, but... Um, <laughs> well, you can, you can blame Mike for, for, for not, not attending the, uh, <laughs> the panel. That, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'll have to find him after. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we looked at pretty much everything from TPS to security, number of certifiers, uh, really just to evaluate where we would be at relative to the rest of the market. And so we spent, uh, we're currently spending a good deal of time looking at the theoretical TPS that we could get uh, to make sure that we're at least kind of in the middle of the pack in terms of uh, what we think we can process in terms of transactions. Um, but we've recently been spending quite a bit of time on security and really thinking about the certifier validator situation. The reality is that when you look at a bunch of EVMs that exist in the market, um, they're actually very highly centralized when you kind of get outside of Ethereum. Um, and because of that, they're able to uh, process a lot of transactions very quickly. Um, but when you kind of dig a little bit deeper, you see that the things that you're tokenizing, the assets that you hold, uh, are essentially kind of at the whim of 10, to, uh, at the whim of 10 to 15 to 20 organizations that you, for whatever reason, have to kind of trust when you transact there. So uh, as a company, we've been thinking a lot about how do we uh, get to a place where we're decentralized enough that we're comfortable, um, but uh, we, we are operating in a space where the reality is that it is a semi-centralized uh, um, platform and so we have to make sure that when we uh, look to partner with companies that are going to run validator and certifier nodes, uh, we have the right things in place uh, such that uh, security is not compromised. Thanks, John. Um, so you know, Jonathan said something uh, interesting about uh, gaming on the on the previous panel. Um, basically, that it's in dial-up era, and I, I think when we think about 
Web3 and crypto and EVMs, um, I think the technology is moving so fast that at some point, probably in the pretty near future, we're going to move from a dial-up stage to a more broadband stage uh, for this technology. And that'll open up a lot of other areas. So, and when I, when I say broadband, not only on the technology, but on regulations as well. So with that, DeFi at this point has brought in about a trillion dollars um, into, into blockchains. But most of that has been around holding cryptocurrencies based on protocols or, or, or blockchains. How, Spencer, do you think in the future we might see DeFi start to permeate into the real world and, and uh, kind of touch everyone's daily life? Yeah, it, and that's also a great question. I, I think a lot of it is sort of making this connection that we've already kind of seen on you know, the user interface side where people are kind of trying to connect Web 2 to Web 3, we kind of get this Web 2.5. I think that similarly, um, you know, we're going to start seeing people, you know, bring in external sources, whether it be data that lives, you know, kind of on the current deep web or Web 2 databases or traditional databases or information about, you know, real world products, be it art or cars or you know, jewelries or accessories or anything that needs to be authenticated or regulated um, and starting to kind of bring those in and seeing them wrapped in NFTs or tokenized um, and, you know, kind of creating these trustless systems that, you know, it, it's not just that they're on the blockchain and that's cool, even though it is, obviously, but, you know, really these kind of concepts that at the end of the day make things more efficient, save companies money, time, um, you know, and kind of are able to take uh, various, you know, sources that are kind of siloed now and bring them under one roof. It's kind of using like decentralization for centralization of information, which is a little of a weird concept, right? But it brings with it all of these benefits. And I think that's probably how we're going to get there once we start seeing, you know, all this outside information being brought in tokenized, and I think NFTs and NFT marketplaces um, hold a lot of promise for that. Uh, and, you know, just essentially kind of going into the new standards of NFTs and kind of the things that we can do that are even beyond what we're seeing today are going to be key. Thanks. Um, turn to Sebastian. So uh, through your work, you're very, very focused on the NFT world, and, and Horizon Labs has found a lot of success uh, through NFTs. Um, what projects are you seeing out there that get you excited right now? Uh, anything kind of innovative or new that, that really, uh, um, you know, uh, you feel might, might lead to uh, the next big thing in, in that world? Yeah, so first of all, so this is not financial advice, so <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what, I, what I might recommend will definitely go to zero. So um, <laughs> where I, I see a lot of potential is uh, what's currently happening on um, Solana with the Utes project, for example, and uh, where, of course, on the one side, the team is doing a good marketing um, job itself, but also the stuff they are planning in terms of staking, for example, or uh, being able to uh, actually as the community contribute trades to the collection. I think that's very nice. And um, in the context of Horizon, this is also, I would say, a cool uh, role model because why I think youths uh, will be successful is because they, um, they were dependent on being able to have a flexible programming on Solana so that they could actually implement custom features for the NFT collection. We, do see this, we did see the same for Board Ape Yacht Club on Ethereum with the staking, which Horizon Labs is building. And so with uh, the EVM being fully custom programmable, uh, this is a, a huge chance for the Horizon ecosystem to also attract like an NFT project or multiple NFT projects that um, like build completely new crazy tokenomics or whatever and then attract a lot of people to, to the Horizon ecosystem. Uh, I also think it's a nice addition to token mint where you might have a more simple minting and in the future potentially also trading also of, of these tokens. Um, that's more comparable I would say to 
kind of like immutable X on Ethereum maybe, in, in my mind at least. And so these things working together um, yeah, have huge potential for bringing a, a lot of users. Thanks. Um, you know, one theme that uh, Rob has mentioned a lot is that Horizon, unlike some other ecosystems, uh, tries not to be too tribal. So I wanted to dig in with John, who's looked at a lot of other ecosystems, especially ones that have EVMs, uh, during our research uh, to, to work on delivering our EVM. And I wanted uh, to, to see from your perspective, which ones excite you the most? Uh, what do you think is uh, unique about uh, uh, the ones that, that you choose? And, and um, where do you see uh, some other ecosystems going that you, uh, beyond Horizon? Yeah, um, I'm going to probably not answer that question and just talk about what I want to talk about. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, personally, I'm, I'm actually very, uh, I'm very into Ethereum. I, I'm not a huge fan of all the other ecosystems. I think they kind of, um, they're all making trade-offs at the end of the day, and they're making trade-offs that make things look better than, than I personally think they are. Um, and that's really like kind of the major takeaway of a lot of the research that I've done at least. Uh, I tend to kind of choose which ecosystem I guess that I'm working with based on what I'm actually interested in at the, the current point in time. And so um, one of the things that's really exciting for me right now is kind of seeing uh, this sort of fantasy sports world move into like daily fantasy with NFTs and that happens to be on Polygon. So um, really kind of if I'm not using Ethereum, which is personally my favorite, I'm in Polygon because that's where Zed Run happens to be and that's where DraftKings has done this whole like daily fantasy thing. So hopefully that answers your question, Jordan. But uh, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say well, not exactly, but you know, I, I respect I respect the challenge of the moderator. So um, so Spencer, uh, <laughs> moving on to you. So you know, you spend a lot of time um, on DeFi apps. Uh, and one of the uh, things that, that we've talked about a lot is user interfaces and basically how um, to a degree user interface can uh, be a roadblock for some new users to, to onboard. Uh, what in your opinion are some DeFi dApps that really are excelling in that area and uh, that kind of excite you and why? Yeah, so, you know, I think that the classic answer is pointing to something like Uniswap and its simplicity. Um, to me, that's not really the, the correct answer, though. I, I think that the big blocker is, you know, there's so much stuff that's sort of, you know, kind of hidden or sort of made unclear to the user. You know, oftentimes you'll go into DeFi and people will talk about things like APRs and compounding APYs. Um, but there's no real sort of standard in terms of what that means, right? How you're getting to the average, what the interest is being paid in, right? It's not USD, it's not, you know, something where everybody knows the price of instantly, usually like BTC or ETH, it's, you know, whatever coin you are, and it's very hard to figure out things like impermanent loss um, and the risks behind it. And so, you know, to me, I, I like to look at a platform like Beefy Finance, actually, where it really spends the time on explaining what's going into an investment, right, or into a vault in their case, um, what you can expect out of it, what the actual risks are, what is going into the APY. And I think that that kind of transparency um, is something that can bring more people into DeFi systems and, you know, not sort of scare them off or confuse them or make it feel, you know, like a scam, right? Well, we are out of time, uh, but it was a really interesting chat and, um, you know, I can't wait for the EVM to launch and for everyone in this room to be involved in this ecosystem and, and in, enjoy the work uh, that we're doing here at Horizon Labs and as with, with builders like Sebastian. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.